Today on the show, it's the case for Scott Summers in defense of Cyclops, one of Marvel's most hated mutant characters. Mm, I never liked Cyclops. Not my favorite X-Men. Not my favorite. back here on YouTube as a foreign exchange student studying humans. Mm. And I'm thankful to be back, turned back on, after being stored in the closet for six months with my battery off. What did I miss? <laughs> Who's the president? Is Where? it still Bill Clinton? <laughs> Comic Book Girl, I'm so excited today. I've been waiting so long to hear you talk about one of your favorite subjects again, the X-Men. Oh my gosh, Space Brain. It's so exciting. It's Facebook official. The Disney Fox merger has gone through and the X-Men are coming home, baby. Coming home. My favorite mutants are finally going to be featured in the MCU. Oh, yay. I mean, it is a little weird because like now they're like an IP monopoly, but whatever. I'm not focusing on that. I'm focusing on the good parts of this. All right, get ready. Okay, you guys like Black Panther? Well, I can't wait to see the look on his face when he gets a load of Storm for the first time. Oh my god. Yay, I'm so excited for you. Thanks, I know a lot of you are. I know a lot of you are. Everyone on Twitter was so excited for me too. <laughs> and because of this marvelous event, I would like to take some time to talk about the X-Men, specifically the leader of the X-Men, Scott Summers, also known as Cyclops, who has recently been resurrected in the comic books. Why Cyclops? I'd rather talk about Wolverine or Gambit. You know, the cool popular ones. Well, I mean, there's more than enough stuff about them online. I mean, people can't shut up about those guys. I want to talk about Cyclops because I think that he's one of the most important characters in the Marvel Universe, and I want to make sure that we get him right in the MCU. Most important? <laughs> I mean, I said one of the most important, but, you know. <laughs> Okay, look, he was the first X-Man, okay? And he represents the core values of the X-Men, okay? He is at the center of this team, and we have never seen him done right on the big screen. It's just so important, guys. It's so important. We gotta get Cyclops right. If you don't get Cyclops right, the whole, everything else falls apart. Oh. Excuse me, excuse me. We think Scott Summers is an asshole. Oh, hey, trolls. Hi. All right. We don't like Scott Summers. Everyone knows it. He's a dick. Oh, no, it's unfortunate that a lot of people think that. Well, I think a big part of it is that Looper video. I mean, it got almost 3 million views. What why Looper video? This video about why Scott Summers is an asshole. As one of the original Uncanny X-Men back in 1963, Cyclops had a ton of potential. He's always been a key member of the Mutant Squad, and his eyes can basically punch things, so you'd think that would warrant a little more respect around the Marvel Universe. Let's take a look at the many ways this mutant leader went from being kind of cool to kind of a creep. Oh, well, Looper did this attack piece on Cyclops, pretty much outlining all these terrible things he's done without any context from the comic books, okay? It's totally unfair. Everyone just piled on and bandwagoned. It's got like 3 million views almost. Yeah, we watched it 10 times. We thumbs it up. Oh. <laughs> oh no. People shouldn't hate Cyclops. After all, Stan Lee said that Cyclops was one of his favorite characters in the Marvel Universe because he loved tortured heroes. Yeah, gotta pour one out for you, Stan Lee. Wherever you are, we love you. Uh, you just ruined the carpet. Whatever. Doesn't matter. It's trash. Hey, watch it! That's our front lawn! Oh, whoops. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me! We've got our own list! Top 10 reasons why Cyclops is a terrible person! Well, okay, let's hear it. Let's hear it, trolls. Reason number one! Cyclops is a poor leader. In his very first mission, he let Worf get killed! Oh, yeah. Cut to the clip, beef! Cyclops! We are being overwhelmed! Back for Beast and Morph. We can't help them. 
Oh, that's true. Cyclops did let Morph get killed. He didn't get killed. He came back later as part of some Mr. Sinister bullshit. Next. Reason number two. Cyclops has terrible taste in music. In this clip, he's caught listening to In Sync, totally lame boy band music from 2000. It's a Cyclops' car. Oh, yeah. I don't like uncomfortable silences. What are you doing? As you can see, Wolverine does not approve, and we don't either. Oh, that's a good point. That music is really lame. I bet that's the kind of music that Space Brain listens to. What? No, I don't listen to NSYNC. I don't even own no strings attached. Reason number three. Cyclops is a dork. Uh -huh. He's totally crying in the second and third movies, like all the time. Uh -huh. Yeah, Cyclops is a little bitch. Oh, yeah, the trolls are right. Leaders shouldn't be crying so much. Sure. He's not a man. Real men don't cry at all. Reason number four. He's not as cool as Wolverine! Mm, okay. Oh, yeah, he's been stealing Wolverine's screen time! Uh-huh. And reason number five, Cyclops is a terrible person? He got his ass kicked by Toad! A total D-list loser villain! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Pathetic! Yeah, that was embarrassing. <laughs> disappointing. Ugh, yikes. Well, that's enough for me to make up my mind. I don't even need to hear the other five reasons. The trolls are right. Cyclops does suck. Look, wait a minute, wait a minute. <clears throat> it sounds like all the reasons you're citing uh, come from either the animated series or the Foxman movies. Yeah, yeah, so what? Well, I mean, most people's only point of reference <clears throat> for Scott Summers comes from either the animated series or from these movies. <clears throat> that's true. I've never read any comic book. Well, if you've never read any comic book, then you're a fake geek girl and you don't know Scott Summers. And Whoa, you don't know what hey, you're talking about. Hey, so. huh, Oh, what? Oh, boo! Fake geek girl. That's what you are uh, because you've never read the comic books because that's where you get his interesting, textural, multi-dimensionalness. Okay, this comes from the comic books. Huh, I like the X-Men movies. What's your problem? Because I don't see one. Well, Robot, my problem with the Foxman movies is that, in my humble opinion, most of them are not true X-Men films. They're not? No. They're more films about Wolverine. Fair enough. In fact, all of them except for, like, two center around Wolverine. Mmm. Yes, I think that these films should instead be called the Wolverine Men, okay? And it's... And that's fine, I love Wolverine. Look, I love Wolverine, I get it. He's a cash cow, we all love Wolverine. Hugh Jackman did a great job, you know, he's very sexy, he was a very handsome Wolverine. He fucking really committed to that role. Um, but, you know, the X-Men aren't just Wolverine. It's a whole bunch of different people and it's their interactions uh, that make me really happy. That's why I'm here. I like seeing these, this cast of colorful characters interact with one another. I like their interpersonal relationships. Oh, that's a good point. Making Wolverine the main character is a huge deviation from the comics, and it is going to warp every aspect of the storytelling. And also, I mean, Hugh Jackman was a breakout star. I mean, I get it. Like, they tried this thing, everybody loved him, they were like, all right, let's just, like, go with him. We'll go with him. It makes it easier anyways. But I want that team dynamic, you know what I'm saying? Give me some balance. Because, you know, while Logan is awesome, you know, uh, he's kind of got the same fucking story over and over again. Who am I? Uh, you know, all that shit. It's like, I'm just, okay, we get it. Like, can we talk about anyone else, please? Like, anyone and their problems. Thank you. And so when you have an X-Men movie that really focuses on Wolverine, a whole franchise that's just focusing on this one character, uh, Cyclops, instead of balancing him out and being the order to his chaos, the leader to his wild card, you have Cyclops merely becoming a foil to make Wolverine look cool the whole time. I mean, the Foxman movies have you actively rooting for Wolverine to sleep with Cyclops' girlfriend. Scott wasn't written to be the leader of the X-Men. He was written to be the guy in the way of the hero's love interest. Oh my gosh. And they go out of their way to make him look like an asshole. They put him in cardigans, they put him in turtlenecks, they gave him the lamest fucking Oakleys. I mean, I know maybe they were cool at the time, but I've always thought those glasses were lame. 
Uh, they had him listening to the fucking in sync. I mean, they're inferring that he listens to in sync for Christ's sake. And I mean, honestly, that is character assassination. No, no offense to in sync fans. I mean, in sync fans are supposed to be like 15 year old girls, okay? Not grown ass men, you know? Not space brains either. I, I don't listen to. But again, it's not just Scott Summers that was fucked up in these movies. It was a lot of fucking characters. It was Rogue. It was Storm. It was fucking almost everybody, okay? Almost everybody they fucked up. Almost everybody. Warped. Yeah, it's warped. The Fox franchise has a 19-year history of misrepresenting Cyclops. That's how warped it is. Okay, this man is the leader of the X-Men, and he's underplayed in the first trilogy of movies. He's only in the third X-Men movie for like four minutes before being killed off screen. Matthew Vaughn's first class X-Men may be the best Fox X-Men movie, but it doesn't feature fucking Scott Summers. He was the first X-Men. He was in the first class, not his brother Havoc. We finally get a new Cyclops by X-Men Apocalypse, but by then it's like 15 years too late. He's not even leading the X-Men. You have fucking Mystique doing it. And it's one of the worst films in the whole movie franchise. Like I walked out of it. Oh, it really is warped. And they fucked up his fucking blasts. They made them laser heat blasts when they're only concussive. It's concussive force. It just knocks you back. It's not a fucking laser. Anyone bothered to read the comics who's making the fucking movie would know that. Oh, it doesn't matter. You're splitting hairs. Whatever, trolls. Here's the problem overall. The Fox Men movies have been going on for nearly 20 years now. And for 20 years, Fox has misrepresented Cyclops. And worse than that, Fox has convinced a whole generation of moviegoers to think that Scott Summers sucks. Well, then what's your problem with the cartoon series? I don't have a problem with the cartoon series. The cartoon series is fantastic. Uh, it was where I got involved with the X-Men, but it is a cartoon series made for kids, okay? And I feel like Scott and Storm are represented very two-dimensionally. And you don't really get some of their more interesting, complicated plots. You can only get those in the comic books, you know? So if your only point of reference for Cyclops comes from the cartoon series, then you're not getting the full picture. Cyclops is an archetypal character. He represents the big blue Boy Scout, such as Superman and Captain America. He is a follower of the rules. He believes in the rules. He's a true believer. He believes in Xavier's dream of peaceful coexistence between mutants and humans. He lives in a fucked up scenario where, you know, they're constantly being hounded by legislation or other mutants or humans or having to cover up for other fucking mutants doing fucked up shits like fucking bumming everybody out. They got sentinels coming after him. Mutants are hated and feared. That's what he's grown up with. And so he's trying his best to help create a world where mutants and humans can get along. True believer. A lot of people tend to forget that Cyclops is a manager, okay? He's a manager, he's the team captain, he's the team leader, really that means manager. And the thing about managers is, is they're not supposed to be your friend, they're your boss, okay? Like, that's their purpose. It is not to high five and fucking yeah, whatever. It's like, it's about getting a bunch of different crazy personalities to work together to achieve a shared goal. If you didn't know, uh, managing people is really hard, okay? It's really difficult because humans are crazy, okay? It's like herding cats, trying to get humans to come together and do anything. So getting a whole bunch of fucking Omega, powerful mutants, some of the most colorful characters in existence, trying to get all these assholes to work together. I mean, you've got Storm, who's a fucking goddess. You've got Wolverine, who's a crazy killing machine. You've got Gambit, who's an incredible fuck boy. Uh, you have all these crazy characters. And so, and somehow, Somehow, he's able to get them to all work together and get shit accomplished, which is mm. a fucking testament. And if he fails in his mission, uh, his entire species could be potentially wiped off the face of the planet. It's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure for just one guy. A lot of people don't realize his backstory either. I mean, he has a really, really dark fucking childhood. Uh, he believed that both of his parents were killed in a plane crash 
He uh, had to save his brother. They only had one parachute, okay? Him and his brother had to fly out of an airplane with one parachute. And he saved his little brother, by the way, but his fucking powers went off, but he still hit his head. He was in a coma for a long time. When he wakes up, he's been taken in by a Mr. Sinister fucking orphanage, an orphanage run by Mr. fucking Sinister, okay? He doesn't know that for a long time, but he's like fucked up by that whole situation. I mean, it's crazy. Remember the time he blasted a kid in half? Well, that's the thing about him is that if he loses control for a second, he could kill somebody just by looking at them. Just by looking at somebody, he could kill somebody. He has to be on point, on guard at every moment of every day to make sure that just by looking at someone, he doesn't kill them. And of course, that's gonna put a lot of pressure on him. Oh, uh, 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 I never thought about it like that. Yeah, I mean, when literally your looks can kill people, it kind of fucks with you a little bit. You can see why he's so serious. Not everyone's supposed to be a fun guy too either though. I mean, it's like, can you imagine, you can't have a whole team of Wolverines and nothing would get done. Oh, I want a whole team of Wolverines. No, you don't. You don't want a whole team of Wolverines. Well, th that's the thing. It's like, if you have all these assholes who are all loose cannons and loners, then they're not gonna work together, are they? They're all gonna fucking split up and go do their own bullshit thing. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Look, I'm not saying you have to like Scott Summers, but I am saying that you can motherfucking respect him, all right? Well, hmm, I guess maybe Cyclops is pretty cool after all. Guess the trolls were wrong since they haven't read the comics. Ha! You think her propaganda reel changed our minds, but it hasn't! You think you've saved Cyclops, but you're wrong! Yeah, yeah, yeah! We've got five more reasons Cyclops is a terrible person! And they all come from the comics! Your whole bullshit argument is about to be thrown out! Oh my gosh! I'm sure they're not great reasons, Robot. Don't worry about it. It's totally fine. It's gonna be fine. Don't worry. They, they got nothing. They got nothing, Robot. Oh, they're good reasons. They're reasons so destructive to Cyclops, so undeniable, that there's no saving him. There's no saving Cyclops' reputation, and there's no saving you! Next time on the Comic Book Girl 19 show, were the trolls right? He's a terrorist. Is Cyclops the most terrible character in the Marvel Universe? What kind of a hero does that? Will Cyclops' reputation be ruined forever? Oh my gosh. Oh no. Oh my god, the trolls were right the whole time, the whole time! Cyclops built a murder squad! Oh no, no one will ever listen to CBG-19 after this video. C certainly Comic Book Girl has the defense for all of these points. Certainly. Find out next time on... The Comic Book Girl 19 Show. Wow, it's been so great to have me back here on YouTube. What have you been doing during the break, Comic Book Girl? Oh, well, I've been working on my own fashion line. That's right, I'm launching my 19 brand casual cosplay. Fashion line? Yes. You created fashions? I sure did. What? Yes, 19 brand casual cosplay. Casual cosplay, oh wow. What's that? Well, from the convention floor to the grocery store and everywhere in between, you can wear my clothes to rep some of your favorite superheroes while also being comfortable and casual. Oh, neat. Yeah, I noticed a thing where there's a lot of dudes out there who want to dress up, they want to get into cosplay, they want to dress as their favorite characters, but they don't either have A, the crafting skills to create a whole costume, because that's really fucking hard, or B, uh, it's just really uncomfortable, you know? I mean, it's just not a comfortable thing wearing spandex. I don't know if you've ever done it or not, but it's very discouraging. Uh, and unless you have a specific body type, it can't always, it's not always the most fun fucking experience of your life either. And I solved that problem and I did it just for you, okay? Whoa, just for me? Just for you. So you can walk around and rep your favorite dude and be comfortable and casual, look awesome. Oh, wow. The whole deal is, is that if people don't know who the character is, they're gonna be like, wow, you look like a cool guy. And if they do know what the character is, they're gonna be like, wow, you look like a really fucking cool guy. Like, where did you get that outfit? Oh my gosh, what are your three outfits? Well, I have the Claws Polo. Neat. Oh yeah. I want that one. Yeah, it's a, it's a zip polo. You can zip it all the way up. You can leave the collar popped. You can fucking fold it over, whatever you want to do. You can tuck it in. You can leave it untucked. It's up to you. It's the whole thing. And then I have the optic pullover and sunglasses, just like the polo. It is a full zip. You can zip it all the way up or not, you know? Got some sunglasses that go with it. It's pretty cool. Ooh. Yeah. 
And last but not least, the Ace of Hearts athletic set. We've got a hoodie and joggers. Oh, that one comes with pants. Yes, it has pants. And there's thumb holes. Oh, I sure do wish I had legs so I could wear them. I know, it's really too bad that you don't have a body. I've got a body and I'm gonna wear it. Yes, well, they come in sizes extra small to extra large. So I think I'm an extra large. I think you're like a 4X, but okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I just don't have that size. Cause this is an experiment. This is my first time around. So we have a very limited quantity. They're gonna go fast. Oh, so I better hurry. By the time that you even fucking see this, they'll probably already be gone. Oh no, oh, I gotta go. So you can go to my web store, Danica XIX. Oh, okay. Check it out right here, buy my clothes. I'm trying to make an honest woman myself. <laughs> oh no, where do I go? What's the website? This episode of the Comic Book Girl 19 show was made possible by viewers like you. Thanks to all my Team 19 members on Patreon for all of your support. Yay!